So I want to talk about the new nominee, Katanji Brown Jackson. I know a lot of black people are waving and saying happy, happy, happy that there's a black uh, female nominee for the Supreme Court, but not, not so fast, not so fast. There's always a question when someone of your race is put in a position as to whether or not they are going to really represent your interest. And it doesn't matter what if they look like you or not. It matters what their backgrounds are. And so we need to look closely at who Katanji, Katanji, at who Katanji uh, Brown Jackson is and, and see whether or not she has the best interests of our race going forward. Now, she's a judge, so we really need to delve into her past and her record on dealing with um, blacks in the criminal justice system. Uh, now, come on, we know that when Kamala Harris was chosen by Biden, a lot of pressure was put on him. I'm calling it fake pressure because it really didn't result in and didn't make much of a difference in who he nominated. There were a group out of Hollywood that said, you know, we will withdraw our votes if you don't select a black woman for your running mate. Well, he chose a person. If you look at her closely, you'll see that she's black. If you look at her very closely, you can see that she's black. But and everybody black seemed to be satisfied. Even though she wasn't the darkest, which kind of set a red flag to me. Uh, but that really doesn't matter. What is your record? And Kamala Harris had one of the highest records of prosecuting blacks. She sent people to, to jail for being unable to send their kids to school. I'm not going to go into all of that. Because this is about Katanji Brown Jackson. I want to look at her background and share her background with you and to see whether or not she is the best person to represent the interests of the black race. Okay, there's no question that she has the credentials. There's no question that she has the credentials. She's been a federal judge uh, for almost a decade. And recently, uh, last year, I guess, uh, according to the Post, the Washington Post, Biden uh, selected her for the U.S. Court of Appeals, which many people say is basically, or this article says is, you know, more or less a waiting list for, for Supreme Court candidates. So, you know, she has her credentials. Um, she attended, you know, Harvard, you know, uh, her parents graduated from HSBC historically black uh, colleges, HSBCUs is what I'm trying to say. Um, she obviously had uh, a privileged education that not all blacks get. So right there, it sends a red flag in my mind that then maybe there's a disconnect between the, all of the people that she's serving. You know, I'm not to say that all black people are in poverty, but there many are. Many have been disenfranchised. So does she represent all of the black race uh, or all people for that matter, um, especially when she has been so, um, you know, had such a linear path from childhood to adulthood. She was um, a lawyer, like in private firms, some of the best firms in the country hired her. So after reading through, I'm going to tell you what I looked for and I found. And um, I think this is a good indication that she may have the interests of the people. Looking at her background, she chose after having spent, you know, most of her career in privileged uh, positions. Actually, her, her father was an attorney. Her father was an attorney. Uh, he represented the school board. Um, 
in, 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 in Miami. So, but, so despite all of her qualifications, what strikes me and what impresses me is that after having served and had the ability to, to choose her where she served, after having a record that she could choose any, perhaps any job that she wanted, any position that she wanted, in 2005, she became an assistant federal public defender in D.C. And during that time, she gained insight as to what people go through who are unable to afford legal representation. She, as this article said, it says, she was quote unquote struck by how little her clients understood about the legal process, even though some of the consequences they faced were, were serious. So with that insight, she vowed to take extra care to make sure that defendants are aware of what's happening. Now that to me outweighs all of her degrees, um, all of her, um, you know, previous positions, because without knowing the people you serve, it is difficult to serve them. So before being uh, serving on the highest court of the land, you need to know what the lowest people, the people who are at the bottom are going through. So um, despite her color, like I said, I like to look at the person and the person's record. And for now, you know, I'm, I'm going to cut this short because it's, it's just happened. I'm just able to sort of read through some of this uh, sort of a cursory reading. I'm going to peruse a lot more uh, going forward and be able to give you more information about her role and how it's going to impact our land going forward and specifically blacks and other disenfranchised people. We have people from all walks of American life who are marginalized. I'm looking for a day when uh, the homeless American will have a voice and be represented for some of the things that are done systemically and have not made the mainstream media or have not been popular topics. Um, that is my hope. Uh, but for now, it looks as though she is a person at least who uh, has a willingness to understand uh, who people are, what their challenges are, and uh, to be able to work with them. Yeah, so, you know, I'm, um, I, you know, I'm going to refrain judgment in terms, you know, of like giving her a thumbs up. But I'm going to say she's she's looking like uh, she is uh, a good choice uh, for Biden Supreme Court nominee. And uh, even though I have very conservative leanings, I want you to know that um, I think I think things look good. Right now, things are looking good. And in future talks, I will give you more ideas. I don't know if I'm going to use this on my podcast or or my uh, YouTube channel. I know it's gone on YouTube, but you might hear it on the podcast as well. In any event, wherever you get, it's Let's Talk on YouTube or on the podcast. I hope you'll just subscribe and somehow wherever network you find me and that you'll follow me. And with that, I'll talk to you soon. Peace.